let's take a look at last year's top 10 plays and a couple of games that uh, rubbed me the wrong way. I hope you'll enjoy that. Overall, we played 43 new systems this year, 70 games, uh, 70 game sessions, and had a lot of fun. But let's have a look at that top 10. Who? What's going on here? Who are you and what are you doing here? Here we go. Big 10. Big man, Big 10. Well, thanks, Dan, I think, for interrupting my video. But nevertheless, we'll try and carry on from here. As you can see, number 10 is Last 100 Yards from GMT Games. A particularly interesting title. I found it uh, somewhat frustrating to learn initially, but once you get the hang of it and understand what the designer is trying to get at, I think you, you would enjoy the game, primarily because it really does give us a fresh look at tactical combat. It is not, uh, or it does not have its genesis in any way, shape, or form from uh, ASL, Advanced Squad Leader. It is uh, a fresh look at combat in the tactical uh, scale at World War, in the World War II era. And I found it uh, very refreshing, very interesting, and uh, a little bit of a challenge to learn slash master. I wouldn't say I've mastered it, only played the game a couple of times, and really only got up to the point where we were using mortars and things of that nature, so we didn't get much further than that. But I am uh, very enthusiastic about learning uh, more about the game and the game system, and I'll probably be playing it again in February up at Game On in Seattle. So uh, hopefully with the designer. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, exploring the system more. Great maps, great counter art, uh, very good clear rule book, good scenarios. The uh, rules obviously have evolved since the game has been released. So there've been some changes, updates, and modifications to the rules. I'm not 100% certain how significant um, uh, most of those changes were, but I found the game overall to be very, very, uh, I would almost say enthralling in the from the perspective that it uh, draws you in and really builds up this narrative given uh, the simultaneous nature of a lot of the combat resolution mechanics. So a real thriller for me to play. I enjoyed it a lot. And I think that uh, if you have an opportunity to play it with a friend or uh, purchase a copy, you might quite like it. Uh, do not expect it, however, to be lock and load, ASL, uh, combat commander, or anything else. There are uh, a number of unique mechanics here for combat resolution, the passage of time, morale checks, and all that sort of good stuff. So uh, one of my favorites uh, for the year uh, last 100 yards from GMT. Well, after 10, going down, it's got to be 9. I don't know what type of audience you have, Kevin, but I can't keep spelling out numbers, especially going backwards. So 9. Well, Dan, thanks for the love. <coughs> DVG Games, Dan Burson Games, Phantom Leader. A surprise fun package here that really gave me some clear and uh, concise and highly narrative driven uh, insights into uh, the Vietnam War's air war, which I knew very little about. I'd watched a, uh, a uh, documentary on this particular uh, this particular era, and in fact, a particular type of aircraft, I think was the, either the Thunder Chief or something of that nature. I forget what they were called now. I uh, probably should know that, right? In any case, uh, the Thunder Chief uh, documentary really got me excited about understanding more about how these guys were, uh, how these guys were uh, treated, how they worked, how they worked together. And this game gives you all of that as a solitaire game. Lots and lots of decision making to be had, lots and lots of fun to be had, and a, uh, a unique approach which has given me somewhat of a, a, a more uh, enthusiastic mindset about the DVG solitaire systems for other games in this uh, in this system they have one for uh, apache helicopters for instance so i'm going to be checking more out, more of these games out in the future <coughs> excuse me and i'll also be looking to play this a couple a couple more times i love the i love the pilots names on the on the aircraft cards i love the content i love the uh, quality of all the 
uh, components. Rulebook is pretty good, not awesome, but pretty good. All in all, in the end, it's a very straightforward game, but it does require you to make a lot of choices. And as a solitaire game, as you know, I'm uh, rarely enthusiastic about them, but this, uh, this clocked in at number nine for me, and uh, probably the best or second best solitaire game I've played in a long, long time. So uh, anyway, I thought I'd just share that with you and uh, we'll see uh, what's up next, uh, assuming that Dan will actually grace us with telling, uh, telling us uh, what, the, what the next game is. Eight. For some reason, I've always liked the number eight. I don't know why. Maybe because it's divisible. Whatever. Eight. Well, sliding in at number eight is a another fantastic title from Vento Nuovo. I've uh, enjoyed this set of games overall. Uh, Kiev 41, Moscow 41, Leningrad 41. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever included one of these games in uh, my top 10 uh, commentaries in the past, although I may not have done one last year anyway. But once again, if I took this game just on the components and the quality of the rules in terms of their completeness and the accuracy of uh, translation from Italian to English, it's well worth the money and gives you significantly more value relative to any other block game manufacturer that's out there today. And uh, I could uh, name those companies, but we won't bother going down that rocky road will leave you you all know who they are nevertheless this game i think uh encapsulates uh sort of the the ultimate thinking about uh, eastern front warfare in a block game format uh dealing with uh, what i would call an operational scale uh, uh game here where we're looking at <clears throat> divisions and cores and things of that nature uh to to fight out uh, really all of the Eastern Front in the southern sector, the AGS or Army Group South area. And uh, it does a really, really nice job. There's uh, just enough uh, just enough push and pull in the, in the game and uh, the dura for the duration of the game that it covers, that it allow allows both sides to get involved in, in, the, in the fight. And uh, there are some strategies you're going to have to evolve if you want to be successful. So for either side. So I think that uh, overall for me, I've enjoyed this game system because I really do think of this as uh, somewhat of a system. It's, it's the same set of mechanics uh, for movement, combat resolution, and uh, resupply, and uh, the, uh, the sort of... I'm trying to think of the right word here, how you, how you manage your headquarters and all that sort of good stuff, which are, are, are what activate units. All of that is, is very, very similar, if not identical across the three, the three game modules. So a uh, particularly good module and release. The Kickstarter came out on time, if not early. It's a chock block full, a uh, chock full of great artwork, great stickers, uh, stickers are laminated so that you can um, spill stuff on them as are, as are the maps. You can uh, also peel off the counter uh, the, the stickers once you've started and readjust them, which is one of the little nitpicks that I, I've had with other systems where you've had to actually, you know, go to a spare, right? And, uh, and scrape off a sticker. These will give you an opportunity to place them uh, one or more times so that you'll get so you can get them just right. So for the OCD in the crowd, you're gonna love that. Anyway, I've uh, posted quite a bit about this game and the other game, uh, other games in the series. You should uh, go check them out online and have a look. If you've not bought a Vento Nuovo game before, uh, find that uh, find them, have a look at them. Uh, maybe uh, play online with a friend if you're into block games, and uh, give it a shot. It's a Really, really good, solid system. Probably my uh, my go-to game company when it comes to block games. All right, that's uh, enough of that. Let's go check out what is number seven. Seven. Seven dirty words, such as...
Seven. Table battles from Hollenspiel. I am uh, really, or have really enjoyed this game uh, pretty significantly. In fact, over the course of the last year, it's been in my uh, backpack when I travel. And there's nothing better than being able to uh, pull this game out uh, late night or uh, in downtime and uh, play a quick game. It is literally uh, that easy to do. And it's a wonderful little metaphor for, in particular for me, I use it for Ancients combat. So all the Alexandrian uh, battles, Alexander the Great's battles and things of that nature. So I've enjoyed being able to do that. As well as, uh, there are obviously a couple of other modules as well. In fact, there's a Gettysburg uh, game indeed uh, that you can you can get access to as well. Uh, now, you're not going to get extremely accurate historical results here, right? It, uh, it uses a die, a die pairing method. So based on the numbers on the cards, uh, you are rolling a handful of dice and then placing them on the cards until you have an appropriate combination or set of things that you can or, or are forced to do. And then hopefully that will allow you to move the blocks that are adjacent to the cards away from the enemy and once they're all uh, removed then that uh, particular enemy will be forced to retreat or as eliminated as the case may be uh, it does give you however the feel and the theme of uh, what was going on within uh, or at in this period of time i've played a handful of the uh, expansion number two and en enjoyed all all of them very much and uh, I think uh, it's a fun, light game that you could literally sit down with somebody and explain it to them in uh, three or four minutes and be having a little bit of fun and drinking a beer and, uh, or a soda, as the case may be, and enjoying it uh, as, uh, as, you, uh, as you can. Um, one of the things I will mention here, uh, I like the uh, component quality. The cards are a nice thickness. The dice are good. You get uh, these... Uh, cool little blocks which are all color coded based on the type of formations that you're going to use whether it's a phalanx or cavalry or archers or whatever the case is uh, you're going to you're going to get uh, a nice uh, clean set of uh, of cards and components and it all fits in a very small ziploc bag and you're off to the races with half a dozen battles. Now, what is also interesting is that in uh, one of the uh, more recent C3I editions, uh, magazine editions, there is a battle in there with some cards, but more importantly, there's a rule summary that uh, summarizes the whole game in two pages. And that's exactly what I have take, take with me. I've laminated that and I use that uh, fairly aggressively uh, when I'm playing. So uh, good stuff tops in or, or, or clocks in at uh, number seven and uh, very excited about that whole uh, experience here with the with the table battles and the metaphor that it presents for you six six needles i'd rather stick in my eyes than keep doing this six crowbar let me uh let me preface everything here with uh, the fact that uh, I'll kind of get it out of the way because I will be gushing about it just a little bit for a, a few minutes. I think there's a, a special bit of chemistry that goes on with Herman Luttman and Mark Walker. They're both pretty uh, entertaining and gregarious guys and they have their own views on things. But when the chemistry is right with these two guys, it is uh, pretty powerful stuff. And Crowbar would be a great example of that. Now, uh, many of you may have seen my previous videos. I received a prototype copy of the game and then uh, uh, received a free copy of the game as a consequence of, of that uh, prototype uh, gameplay and write-up that I did. Um, I think what I want to say here is that if you're interested in a solitaire push your luck game system that has a very rich and uh, elegant and clean system, as well as amazing, almost ridiculously amazing components, then I think this is your baby. And that's why I've included it this year, mainly because 
Uh, one, I'm a huge fan of Herman Luttman's games, and this would be no exception. And two, uh, the the quality of the output, the rules are clean and concise. The map, the mounted map board is uh, enormous and beautiful, and the counters are rich, thick, and large. And it really helps what would otherwise be, you know, if you t- if this was published as a magazine game, for instance, in that in that uh, I forget there's one other there's a Civil War game that had a, a push your luck mentality here, where you keep you keep going to, and you're rolling dice and you keep going until you are forced to stop or you die, right? Uh, if you if this was published in a magazine game format, you know, a little eleven by 17 map and you know 75 counters, or whatever the case may be, you would lose a lot here. But because of the, the stunning representation that's presented here and the, the formatting and the rule book and the expansions that come with it, because you can play the Germans as well as the allies in this particular uh, system, it really is an amazing job. And I think if, if you look at what uh, Flying Pigs have done over the last five or six years, I would say that they have raised the bar significantly and really taken from where oh um uh where uh i'm trying to think of the name of the publisher where academy games left off with with conflict of heroes they've taken that metaphor of larger counters better better quality components rich thick colorful everything and kicked that up seven notches you know so it's uh, it's pretty impressive that to me uh, so there's a there's a limited number of ways that can be useful and you've got to choose the right games for that sometimes i i think uh, there are some games that have been released by flying pigs that that has not uh served it well but it certainly has served it well here with crowbar and I would certainly agree that uh old school tactical is a game and a game system that has really benefited from that that uh, heavy, rich, uh, high quality uh, release uh, of the game. So, I think Flying Pigs is doing some amazing things, and over the last decade, I would certainly say they're one of the they've become one of the game companies to watch, along with uh, two or three others. And we'll maybe we'll get into that a little bit uh, in a in a se- in a separate video, but we'll we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so I don't want to spend too much time on on the uh, other components, but they are pretty amazing. The gameplay, uh, once again, here we are, here we are with a solitaire game. It's primarily a solitary a solitaire game. I think the opposed and the co op versions are they're okay. I haven't really tried them out. I haven't played them opposed. I've read the rules for them probably not going to give you the same the same experience it'll be obviously be very different because it's opposed duh, or cooperative <coughs> excuse me but the solo experience really has you on the edge of your seat can you get that squad or that company or that element that platoon that one more hex uh, forward can you find those guns can you uh shoot that uh shoot and suppress that german squad where are the enemy reinforcements going to come in from how can you uh advance and uh, cover your flanks lots and lots of stuff going on lots of decisions to be made lots of choices to be made about uh, how far to push your luck and things of that nature so i've uh thoroughly enjoyed the gameplay only played it a small handful of times so you need to put all that in context this is my top 10 games for the year based on my gameplay and uh i would absolutely uh, absolutely happy to include this one right here and we'll uh we'll leave it at that for this particular title Well, of course, it wouldn't be a top 10 list unless we had a GMT game in there, right? And it also wouldn't be a top 10 list if we didn't, didn't have a Mark Simonich game. So uh, although this is an early release, or I should say a late release in the year, I found that Stalingrad 42 was, as soon as, as it arrived, I had ripped that, ripped that shrink, set it up, 
rolled the dice and got uh, 15, 20 turns into the game and enjoyed it immensely. It is, uh, it's built on that Zoc Bond, uh, the Zona Control uh, Zoc Bond system that Simnich developed for RDM 44, Normandy 44, Ukraine 43, and a host of other games. And so it is uh, immediately familiar yet different, as every single one of his games are. There are a familiar set of mechanics and combat and supply and a few other things are all basically the same. But then you start to get into the nuances, given that this is a multi-map game and a uh, very wide open, um, a very wide open maneuver based game versus many of the others if i look at uh, Nor uh, normandy 44 and rdn 44 and even holland 44 you really are kind of on on rails when it comes to where you can maneuver what you can do and how you can go about doing it but with stalingrad 42 you have a very wide range of choices in terms of uh, your overall strategy then the tactics tactics you'll employ to execute that strategy and the the level of uh, damage that you're prepared to take is also something that you will have some flexibility with as well for both sides uh, i think when i was playing this i uh, over overplayed my hand as the soviets and stayed and tarried too long at the line and as the germans i was a little too conservative with my uh, willingness to accept losses in, for armor and i probably could have been more successful more quickly if i had of uh, sort of ignored losses to a certain extent and also uh, had a little bit of a harder look at the at the historical situation and used uh, the river on the northern flank to uh, protect, to screen versus trying to capture all of the victory locations that were in on the northern side of the map. Uh, anyway, that's bygones. But uh, fun game, amazing quality. Uh, once again, you know, and this is probably a theme you're seeing through these. Uh, my list of top tens is that uh, there there have been some games released this year that are just fantastic components great rule books great maps and obviously uh, very good support generally speaking from uh, most of the the vendors as well so as you can see from the pictures and and sort of some of the time lapse video here uh, it's a a very rich and colorful game it's also eminently playable and has uh, the pace of the game uh, it moved very very well i was a little daunted at first with the 30 plus turns that it was uh, and and the significant number of counters on the board and i thought this wow this is going to be a bit of a slog it's going and it's going to take a lot of time to play but it played incredibly quickly because the combat system uh, to me it seems it's been just refined just a little bit it's a little bit faster on the action and uh, it's a little easier to calculate whether or not there are uh, you know there are significant uh, significant opportunities for overrun and advance after combat and things of that nature minor quibbles would be that there are still some parts of the of the rules the for instance the advance after combat chart really should be somewhere on one of the charts so that I don't have to look it up all the time but you'll soon get to become quickly familiar with whether it's a four hex, uh, a four hex advance or a three hex advance, as the case may be. Anyway, uh, so loved it. It's if you liked any of the uh, Simon Edge titles from GMT in the past, then you'll love this if you have the room to set it up because it is a biggie. It's uh, basically two and a half maps, and while I do believe that you can play, there are some other scenarios besides the campaign, you can play some smaller scenarios. If you want to get the full Monty and really enjoy the whole thing, you're going to need a, a substantial amount of space to set this up. But uh, it all comes together very, very nicely and it's uh, very well priced, uh, particularly on the pre-order as well. And one final comment on it, uh, the, the city combat rules are also very, very interesting. I like the way that they're handled and run and uh, i've enjoyed it a lot all right i'm gonna leave it there with this one and let's see what the uh, next title is okay <clears throat> let's just take a little break from counting down from 10 to zero huh? you know i know kevin you guys don't know kevin i know him huh? and when he goes out in his secret little life he dresses like this 
And these are his friends. So, uh, yeah. Four. <laughs> well, this is one of the problems when I, uh, I let Dan run amok with, you know, on my personal profile. <laughs> I don't know who those guys are. Uh, BCS. I have, uh, have had a love-hate relationship with this system. When the last Blitzkrieg first came out, I was reading the rules before I played and I read the rules online before I played and then set up the last Blitzkrieg and really didn't enjoy it very much at all. There were a lot of user interface aspects to that game and that game system that I really didn't like and pack that sucker up and put it away. Well, then along come the uh, Brazen Chariots and uh, the, the other module there, I forget what it's called, but really got stuck into those, played opposed and played solo. And I think these are the, these are the types of, uh, or scale of game that is best suited for this system for me in any case. Uh, the overall, the game is uh, clearly so different that it's, it's non-intuitive and you're really gonna have to stop and think about the concepts and what, what the concepts are trying to portray for you before you get into the battalion combat system and really start to love it. I don't think you're just gonna pick this game up and, and have a fine old time. It is significantly different. And with all that said, the differences are such that it really brings to life some of the, the key operational choices that have to be made as a, as a commander of a, a theater-wide operation. And the way the supply is handled, the way uh, the combat is handled, the, the way fatigue is handled and attrition is handled and even combat, uh, you know, the, the details around combat for armor and support and things of that nature, really excellent. And I, I, I've enjoyed, uh, surprisingly enjoyed it uh, a lot. Um, there's, there's obviously some debate about, you know, the, the artwork here. I like the maps. I like the counters. I love the new version of the rules and the new charts that have been released. I think they're much clearer and much more user-friendly and much more streamlined. And there's also been a lot of effort put into supporting the, the, the titles so that uh, players can jump into the system a little, a little more uh, effectively. Just by using these objective counters, you are changing the way the all-seeing eye and the godlike view of the Wargamer is handled. And that in of itself is probably enough to make this game a worthwhile exploration for you. Fantastic stuff. Lots of good narrative comes out of it as well. And uh, it's got uh, obviously these, these desert battles of Kasserine and uh, Brazen Chariots, the Kasserine Pass uh, battles with the Americans and uh, the, the fighting in and around Tobruk. Uh, are excellent uh, examples of how this game can, or this game system can be used to really explore some of the challenges that both organized, both uh, sides faced in these given conflicts. Okay, so we're gonna leave it at that and we'll uh, move on to the next title. Oh my God, three, three. All right, I know what you're thinking. World of War 85 is not even released yet for the public. I understand, but I have, I've had access to a full production copy for a couple of weeks now. I've played it two or three times. I've also played it side by side with the old World at War. And all I can tell you is it's amazing. And it's so close to being there. And I got to play it earlier this summer, the last summer as well. So, in terms of my gameplays for the year, wow, significant, fun. Once again, uh, as a common thread through all of these these uh, these reviews here, is that uh, the game's components are amazing. And in fact, I've interspersed a few pictures of some of the older uh, the older system in here as well. So if you love World at War and you love the World at War uh, system, you're going to love this. The, the Kickstarter was an amazing uh, 
expose into how you can do add-ons and give people so much that they just about blow their minds. It's fantastic. So I'm going to leave it all at that. I'm a huge fanboy of the World at War system anyway. If you haven't ordered it or haven't bought it, you know, shame on you. You're probably going to miss out. I don't know if this is ever going to get a rerun, but uh, it was pretty impressive. And I'm, I'm loving every second of it. So uh, there's that. And uh, let's move on to the next guy. Thank goodness for lock and load. They're doing a great job here. Two empty bottles of scotch. That's what it took for me to do up to number two. Two, Kevin, you're going to send me a bottle of scotch? Look, eh? It probably cost you two bucks up in the States. What the hell? Well, I just realized this is the second Herman Lutman title in my top 10. And it's a doozy. <laughs> Kernstown has been a fantastic experience for me, not only because I'm very, very new to... Uh, American Civil War tactical level combat, but I'm new to, uh, relatively new to at least this uh, system that Lutman has put together for, uh, for this uh, this era, and I think it's called the Blind Sword system, but I may be wrong there. Played this opposed with a buddy of mine. Uh, we we jump right into it. He's played with the system a lot, and I then came home and pu pulled out my my Tiny Battles version of of this system for. Uh, that came that came out. It's a small portion of the Gettysburg battle as well, and played it immediately. Played it that next day or that evening. So I'm I'm all in on this uh, American Civil War stuff and the Revolution Games guys. I think this is from Revolution Games. Uh, have done a fantastic job with the map art. I think it's a, a Barber map and uh, the counter components uh, excellent as well. Once again, lending itself to the theme that it's all about the counter components and, and the components of the games. Uh, the rule book probably left a little bit to be desired. I think it could have been clearer and uh, more concise and perhaps a little less wordy and more case oriented for me would have been better. But overall, the game played fast. It's chip pull, uh, chip pull based. Uh, this gives it uh, some element of uh, surprise and uh, uh, makes it harder for you to uh, pre-plan everything, but it also gives you uh, a great opportunity to play this solo as well. So fantastic game system, fantastic gameplay, rich narrative coming out of this as well. And you can see the components are fantastic and uh, very, very enjoyable. So I, uh, I, I got to say that I'm uh, super excited about about this particular title, uh, mainly because of the, I don't know, I, I think the, just the way everything sort of worked together and the, the way the combat system works and the morale system works together is really, really fascinating to me and I've enjoyed it, uh, enjoyed it immensely. All right, we'll now move on to our final title. Finally, number one. And I'll show you the way my mother used to say goodbye to me every time I used to go to school. I always thought she was telling me I'm number one, so I would, I would wave back, grazie mamma, grazie, ciao, I love you. <laughs> now I know better. So I will leave you with this, Kevin. The way my mother would tell me I'm number one. Have a good one. One. All right. My number one game for 2019 has to be Rising Eagles Austerlitz. Just fantastic. Uh, I don't know that I have enough words for this game. Uh, I played it at least four times this year, maybe five. I've got two games going currently on Vassal right now, uh, still carrying over from last year. Once, once again, beautiful components, clear rules, gives you all the command elements and decision-making you would ex expect in the Napoleonic era. You do not have to worry, however, about facing and whether or not you can make a square. Those sorts of things are being managed by brigade and divisional level commanders, and you're looking at what's going on in a the theater. And I, I've waxed lyrical about this game uh, a couple of different times, and I've posted some videos on it, so I won't go on about it today. But suffice to say that uh, Hexasim is producing some of the most interesting and fun games uh, in, the, in the Napoleonic era that I've, I've ever played. Now, funnily enough, 
most of them are somewhat ahistorical in their end result and actually ahistorical or, uh, or make it difficult for certain sides to win depending on how you play. And I found that pretty curious and it's, it's pissed off some folks, but to me, the, when you're, particularly when you're playing opposed, I've found that the, the gameplay kind of overshadows all of these little historical niggles that we might have. And you know, folks saying, oh, well, in Lingi, the, uh, the Prussians just can't do what they could have done or the French can't achieve what they could have done. And, the, and in Austerlitz, it's the same for, uh, for the Russians they, and the, uh, the Austrians. They have uh, extra challenges or it's too, too hard for the French. For me... Despite all that, uh, I have found the gaming experience with the people I've played with to be fantastic, very enjoyable, uh, hist- to me, historically rich and very interesting. So I give it a huge thumbs up as my number one game for the year and, uh, and uh, we'll be looking forward to the re-release of Waterloo and looking forward to new titles and some smaller battles coming out for this particular game in the near future. All right, that's the top 10 for 2019. So I thought I'd uh, take a minute also, uh, just at the end of this video, just to wrap a few things up on a couple of the games that I played this year that were underwhelming. And, and I don't want to detract from the positivity of the of these top 10 that I, I've enjoyed so much this year. But there were two games in particular that really struck me as uh, being games that were uh, poorly, either poorly implemented or poorly designed or lacked significant play testing or had production problems or all of the above. And uh, the two that come to mind, one's a magazine game, War on the Mega City, so we can, you know, we can you know, certainly throw a bucket of cold water on that criticism and say, hey, Kevin, you know, it's just a magazine game. Well, if I'm paying $45, bro, I want the game to work. And War on the Mega City just did not work was not the, the the game the game system was so frustrating and so difficult that uh, and so convoluted and unorganized and nonsensical that it it was packed up and I literally threw that game away. Korea Fire and Ice is another example from Compass Games uh, that uh, was disappointing. Uh, you know we all had uh, well I had. Uh, uh, Grand hopes that Adam Starkweather would uh, pull it all together and not do what he has done, it seems to be, consistently with the GTS, uh, the uh, CSS system, and now this uh, divisional scale system, uh, and just kind of fix it as he goes along. I was hoping that that would not be the case with uh, Korea Fire and Ice, but I found after a handful of turns that the it is probably the single most ahistorical game that I have ever played. Uh, there are issues with air, there are issues with arty, there are issues with tanks uh, and armor availability for uh, the Chinese and North Koreans and things of that nature. And the gameplay is uh, convoluted and a little bit challenging as well, but, uh, and it's also hi- it's highly abstracted as well. So, while there are some very interesting elements that could make a very rich and interesting game, it seems like this is a uh, slip, uh, a, a some form of just let me just push this stuff out there because I need to make some sales, versus uh, releasing a game system that is going to be something that can be built upon and expanded upon and have multiple modules. And I think that Compass Games and or Adam really missed a significant opportunity to do something new and innovative because it's a pretty interesting system, but it's just not implemented well. And I've, I've released some other video on it and I'm not going to badger this thing to death, but it was probably the single most disappointing game in 2019 for me. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Right. So that said, I had a fantastic year. As I mentioned in the intro, it was pretty quick, but uh, I played uh, 70 different games, or sorry, 70 games this year, and uh, some of them multiple times, i.e. Uh, Rising Eagles and, and others, but uh, learnt 43, I think I said it was, 43 new game games or game systems, and 
there's a lot of fantastic stuff happening in, in, in the war game industry at the moment. And there's a lot of fantastic designers that are starting to bubble up to the top and uh, take their place beside some of the more uh, well-known and well-regarded designers. And I think my, my list here probably represents some of those as well, uh, some of the old guard and some of the new guard. And I think that we're seeing a really fantastic time as, as war gamers where we've got amazing components, uh, much better rule systems, interesting rule systems, innovative approaches to how games are played, how uh, history, history is represented, how uh, you know a little more deep, perhaps deeper and uh, richer thought about the mechanics involved and what what's really happening in a particular in a given circumstance, all at various different levels from strategic to operational down to tactical. We're, we're seeing new systems, new rules, new ways of doing things, uh, new ways of representing information on counters, on maps, on charts, the use of color, the use of format, the uh, fantastic things. And I'm so excited to be uh, playing uh, many of these games and uh, being exposed to new ideas. And so I think the 2020 or the next decade uh, and this year in particular are going to be particularly exciting for all of us and I hope that we uh, all enjoy uh, what's going on in the hobby and and we can uh, support these smaller uh, more innovative designers and publishers and uh, give them a little bit of a share of our wallet and and help them be successful so all right let's get on with things and uh, look forward into 2020 talk to you soon